Hi, my name is Mike Welch. Today we are going to be looking at recurring vouchers and accounts payable. In this video, we will talk about what a recurring voucher is and accounts payable, and walk through the process of creating a recurring voucher and then how to generate a recurring voucher. Let's first start with what a recurring voucher is and the situations it may be used. Recurring vouchers are vouchers that are paid at regular intervals for the same amount. Examples of recurring vouchers are rent payments, interest only payments, and loan or lease payments. Now that we have a better understanding of what a recurring voucher is, let's enter one into Microsoft Dynamics SL. We are going to walk through setting up a recurring voucher for a maintenance contract on computer equipment that is paid $500 each month for 12 months. Under Financials, in the Accounts Payable module, you can enter a recurring voucher maintenance screen. Fields in this window work the same as the fields in the Voucher and Adjustment Entry screen, with the exception of a few fields on the screen. One of these fields is the voucher number, where you will need to assign a reference number. But the voucher number is a manually assigned ID and is only used when making changes to the master recurring voucher document. You can use any alphanumeric character up to six characters in length for the ID. In this case, we are going to put computer service. And the vendor we will use is VT0120. The next gen date is the date you want the recurring voucher to start. This field is used to calculate the discount date, the due date, and the pay date of the voucher. This field also controls the next time the voucher is created. When you generate recurring vouchers, the process includes all vouchers with a next gen date equal to or earlier than the date specified during the generation process, which we will talk about later in this video. The cycle field is the length of time and periods between generations of the voucher. Since this sample maintenance contract is once a month, we will enter a 1 here. If you wanted every other month, you would enter a 2 here. The number of cycles field, you want to enter the total number of times the recurring voucher needs to be generated. In this sample case, we are only doing 12 months, so we will enter a 12 here. If you did the every other month scenario for one year, the cycle field would be a 2 and number of cycles would be a 6. If you want the recurring voucher to be indefinite, you can set the number of cycles field to 99, which gives the voucher cycles of about 8 years. You also can increase the number of cycles field at any time to prevent the recurring item from being deleted. For this sample, the voucher amount, we will enter 500. The account, we will enter 7040. And sub account, we will leave the default. And the price is 500. And then we will click Finish. When you enter a recurring voucher in the recurring voucher maintenance screen, it does not update the vendor or generate any transactions for the recurring voucher. We will now go to the Generate Recurring Voucher screen to produce recurring voucher documents. The Generate Recurring Voucher screen uses the information entered in Recurring Voucher Maintenance screen to create a voucher and generate the transactions that record the liability in the general ledger. When you select this process, Microsoft Dynamics SL prepares the generation date with the next gen date of every recurring voucher that is typed in the database to determine if a voucher should be generated. Anything with a generation date less than or equal to this date will show up in the list. We will make sure the recurring voucher we entered in is selected, which it is. Make sure handling is released now, and we will click Begin Processing. This will generate a voucher batch that can be viewed in the Voucher and Adjustment screen. Let's go take a look at how these appear in the Voucher and Adjustment screen. We 
You will see that these appear the same as a normal voucher, so once generated, these recurring vouchers function the same as any other voucher. These recurring vouchers, however, will not generate on their own, so you have to generate them every period. Now let's go back and take a look at the original recurring voucher we entered in the recurring voucher maintenance screen. You will notice the next gen date is changed to December 6, 2013 and the number of cycles has changed from 12 to 11. If you wanted to view all the recurring vouchers that are currently set up, you can use the recurring voucher report. The recurring voucher report lists all recurring vouchers maintained in the recurring voucher maintenance screen. This report displays each voucher in addition to the number of cycles and the next generation date. This concludes the process of entering recurring vouchers and accounts payable. I hope this video was helpful.